So you'd like to learn how to make a simple sterling silver ring. In this video, I'm going to show you every single step you need to take to do exactly that. G'day and welcome. My name is Jess Van Den and I have been running my own sterling silver jewelry business, Ethereal, for over a decade now and making rings that whole time. We love making rings so much. In fact, we specialize in making sterling silver wedding rings for people all over the world. So today I want to show you exactly how you too can do this if it's something you'd like to try. Now, making a ring does require quite a lot of equipment. So I'm going to put up on screen now a list of everything that you're going to need if you want to get started with making a sterling silver ring. You'll see most of this equipment throughout the video as we show you the process of making the ring. So if you're unsure as to what something is, I'll probably point it out as we're going through the video. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we do is select the silver that we're going to use for the project. We have a whole different lengths of widths and then we work out the size using our sizing chart and that will tell us the length that we need to cut the silver to. You can find a really good chart uh, on Wikipedia. Just look up ring sizing. Then we mark where we're going to cut and make sure that the line is straight. So we're cutting a straight line. Placing the silver on the bench pin and using the jeweler saw to cut the silver. You need to start very carefully and then use these little motions to cut through the silver and makes it easier to get through it. We actually have a drop saw that we use now, so we don't have to do this anymore. But as a beginner, this is the way you're going to do things. Okay, so now we have our piece of silver that's going to turn into our ring. We need to make sure that the end is flat and straight. So we give it a bit of a file and then it's time to anneal it. Now annealing is where you heat up the silver so that it softens the metal and it's easier to work with. So here Nick is adding flux to the silver. Now if you're using solder, the flux helps the silver to flow, uh, sorry, the solder to flow, but this just protects it a little bit. And this is our soldering torch. You can just get ones that are like free standing that you can hold in your hand, but we have ours uh, attached to a big thing of gas because we use so much of it. Now the aim here is to heat the metal up until it's glowing a red color. And you'll, you'll know when it's ready because you'll see the glow happening. And when you see that red glow, that means that you have annealed the ring and it will be soft and malleable to work with because we still have to fold the ring together and solder it up. Then you're going to uh, quench the ring. That's the quench water just to take the heat out and then put it in the pickle. And the pickle is what helps remove the scale that formed during the soldering process. So that there'll be like black, black scale and the pickle helps remove that. Okay, so the next stage is to bend the ring up to put the two ends together. There's lots of different ways to do this. This is Nick's preferred technique where he bends in the middle first and then brings the two ends in together. I used to just bend the two ends around. And you wanna just go slowly here because the aim is to get the two ends of the ring to meet up as good as possible. So as neatly and closely as possible. So Nick's just hammering them down to get them closer together. And then he'll finesse them until he can get the two ends together as neatly as possible. Of course, the goal here is you want the two ends to meet together so that when you solder them up, you want to aim to have that soldered join as invisible as you possibly can get it. And so it's, this is a really crucial part of the process. And there's one more step we need to take after this to make sure that the two sides of the ring actually meet up properly. What you'll probably find is that when you do this, there'll still be a little bit of a gap. The two ends might not meet perfectly. So what you're going to need to do 
to sort this gap out is to actually uh, so that you can see it right there you can see the how the two ends there's a gap between them so we need to get the saw out again and actually saw down through that gap and this makes the two sides nice and flush so that they'll sit really close together and sometimes you might have to do this a couple of times uh, to get rid of any of the extra bits of silver on the ends so that the two ends of the ring really do meet up nicely so take your time with this process because it is crucial to getting a really nice neat join on that ring and if you don't do this you'll get a really messy join and it might even break so we can see there that there's still a bit of a gap which means he needs to adjust a little bit and then see if he can remove the gap through adjusting it and if not he'll need to saw it again to remove that gap from the ring so you can see it can be quite a fiddly process that's why you need your pliers all right so he's going to do the second sawing of the ring to remove that last bit of silver that's where it shouldn't be you need to be very careful here to hold your saw very straight so that you don't go in a weird wonky direction you can find sometimes you'll get stuck on the last little bit so just be very careful that you don't accidentally mark the opposite side of the ring with your saw i've made that mistake more than once because i've been too forceful and it's gone through okay so now we've determined that the two ends are nice and flush we're going to file them to remove any extra bits okay so now we're cutting the solder so we use wire solder and this is you can also use different types of solder but this is the type of solder we prefer so you can see all the little bits of solder there ready to be put onto the ring as we're soldering it together so again, Nick's putting some flux on here. He uses a solder picker for this. I tend to use a paintbrush to put it on. Doesn't really matter as long as you get it on there. As I said before, you need to have the flux on there because that actually helps the solder flow into and around and over the joint because you want it to form a really nice seal. So this is a tricky part of the process where you need to solder the ring together. So the first step is to heat up the ring somewhat. Now the goal here is you need to heat the ring and the solder to a temperature that allows the solder to flow. So we tend to heat the ring up nice and hot first and get it ready because the solder is created so that it will actually flow at a much lower temperature than the sterling silver will so you need to get the sterling silver up to temperature and then when you heat up the solder it will actually flow and fill the join so you can see nick's actually heating it from both sides here to get the solder to flow in both directions nicely and you can see it there as well that it's now flowed into the join. So now he's going to pop it in the quench and put it in the pickle. And the pickle you can see there is on a heating block because it works more effectively when it's heated up. Okay, so the scale has now been removed and it's time to make the ring round again. So Nick just is giving it a bit of a hammer so that it fits on the mandrel and then using the nylon hammer he's just hammering it onto the ring mandrel to make it round now you can rest this mandrel on a wooden block if you'd like if you need a little bit more pressure behind the mandrel you can also use the mandrel to size your ring by hammering it in the direction he's doing it now and that will actually move the ring down the mandrel and make it a little bit bigger this is how a beginner would size their ring it's how i used to do it but we're going to show you how we size our rings using a special tool that i didn't actually mention earlier because i don't expect most of you would need this tool to start with so 
So this is a ring expander, a simple one. You can buy these for pretty cheap if you wanted to, but you have to be careful with these not to go too far. So what that does, as you can see, is he's slowly expanding the ring and then removing it. And then you swap it to the other side to make sure it's even in both directions. Because what you'll find is when you solder your ring up, if you've measured it right, you might find that the ring is just a little bit too small, not quite big enough. And so that's where this tool comes in handy. We also have a ring reducer if the ring is a little bit too big, but that's a much more expensive machine. So I recommend that you err on the side of your rings being a little bit smaller when you make them rather than too big, because it's an awful lot easier to make a ring a little bit bigger than it is to make it smaller again. So Nick's just getting it nice and round here and getting it to the exact size that he wants it to be. And you do need to, to hammer around and around to make sure you take out any so now he's checking the size on the mandrel with the sizing on it. And you always check both sides to make sure that they're the same. And this is to flatten the ring out and try to take out any warp that's in the ring, which you can tell by looking down the mandrel like so. And you wanna make sure that the ring is sitting flush on the mandrel all the way around. And there shouldn't be any weird gaps showing. If there are, this is your opportunity to hammer them out. Okay. So we check it again. Again, always, if you're making a wide ring, always switch it around and check from both sides to make sure that they are both nice and neat and flush. Now we're taking off the mess so this is where sandpaper and filing comes in to put a nice finish on the ring and there's lots of different ways you can do this we're just showing you how to put a matte finish on the ring today you can also shine the ring up but you're going to need a polishing machine for that this is the simplest way to make and finish a ring of course the join is where you're going to put the most effort in because you want to make sure that you take out any imperfections in that join so that you can barely see that it exists. And you have to do this on the sides of the ring as well as the inside and the outside of the ring. And then once you've got your join to the point that you're happy with it, then you just wanna finish the rest of the ring. So using a file or some sandpaper, you're gonna go around the inside, the outside and the edges of the ring to make sure that you've removed all of the scale that might have been there and just put a really nice finish on the ring as well. So you can see he's using the rounded side of the file here to take off any sharp edges that might have formed on the ring or that might have been there from the original extru extrusion of the wire. And this can take a little bit of time, but it's the process that will leave you with a beautifully finished product at the end. You can also experiment with other materials, putting finishes on the ring. I know when I was doing my ring making course, uh, we used some steel wool some people used. You can also hammer you know, patterns and things into the ring. But the simplest thing is to finish it off with some coarse sandpaper to just give it a nice matte glow. And there we have it our finished sterling silver ring with a beautiful matte finish on the outside and a filed finish on the inside, which is our signature finish on the inside. Now what you might find if you leave this for a day or two is you may see some copper appearing because sterling silver is copper and silver alloy. And if that happens, you can just use your sandpaper to take off those bits of copper that have appeared. And that's happened because of the annealing process. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in handmade business, please do subscribe to my channel. I have heaps of videos about how to run a thriving and profitable handmade business of your very own. And thanks to my business partner and husband, Nick, for being the star of this video. I appreciate him coming on screen and sharing his skills with us.
Of course, if you decide after all this that maybe you just prefer to buy a ring, please come check us out. We have tons of different sterling silver ring designs available over at our website at ethereal.com and we're happy to work with you to make sure we're getting the perfect size ring for the perfect occasion. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.